Please state your message. Three-Eyed Frog presents The Heart of Ether. Are you really, really sure that's a good idea? Yes. I mean, I, I just think it's a bit late to be going out into the woods and such, right? If there's really an issue with, like, the trees dying, then they, they should still be dead tomorrow. It, it's not like they're just going to come back to life overnight. <laughs> it won't take long. You said it was just off the trail. Yeah, but I'm almost certain nobody else is going to be out. Exactly. It'll be perfect for me to just get in and out quickly, then go home. But what if they're not human? There are bears out there. You know that, right? Hungry, hungry bears. What if, what if nobody's there to help you when one of those big toothed beasts tries to maul you with its massive claws? Look, Aiden, if you're really worried about me going out there, then I'll bring your radio with me. I hereby promise that if I have any bear-related incidents, I'll contact you, and then you can call for help before I bleed out and die. <sighs> That's really not funny, Irene. I won't go exploring or anything. You have my word. Just in and out, find the problem, and then go home. Fine. Just come back to work tomorrow in one piece, okay? I'll try my best. Irene! All right, all right, I'm just messing with you. I'll be fine. If you say so. I think Aiden worries too much. He's a sweet guy, don't get me wrong. I just don't think this is as big of a deal as he made it out to be. I mean, I'm just looking at some dead branches. There is a reason I chose to do this. Trust me, it's not because I wanted to wander around in the woods. I... I tried to record this when Aiden came in, but, well, it seems like I always get interrupted when I record in the office. I need to think, though. There's a lot on my mind, and I just need someone who will listen without judging me. Not that you're listening, but it's not like I have anywhere else. I was thinking about what Carol said. Not about how I need friends, but about the person who lived in my house before me. I asked my landlord about it. He said the dude's name was Bernard Kelly Valencia, <laughs> which is quite the name, isn't it? Valencia was, well, to be blunt, he was a strange man. Hardly talked to anyone, but apparently everyone knew who he was. He hung out a lot with this woman named Dorothy Wood, who I looked up. She actually owns or owns that one bookstore near downtown. Open Eyes Bookstore or something. Anyways, nobody knows if the two are together or what, but they met up constantly. Every time the landlord went over, he said there were papers and books everywhere. If he so much glanced at any of it or asked about it, Valencia would flip his shit. Dorothy was there a lot, too. Valencia wouldn't tell anyone about what they were working on, and neither would Dorothy. He died a couple of years ago from lung cancer. All his stuff went to either his son, the only family member who cared enough to come down and get it, or to Dorothy. She died last year, though. The house itself must have a reputation, because I even found some people online talking about it. Some locals apparently think it's haunted by Valencia's ghost. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about that. What were they researching? I mean, I don't know much about Dorothy, but Valencia seems like he dedicated his whole life to whatever secret work they were doing. It's weird as hell. Maybe I'll never know. I can't stop thinking about it, though. It's none of my business, I know, but still. This must be the spot. I know you can't see because these are audio, not video. 
Basically, these hikers were worried about this big pile of dead branches, especially because it's fire season. There's nothing really exciting about it, just a big pile of dead branches. The surrounding trees seem fine. Huh. Wonder how they got here. We'll just have to- What? Who's there? Hello? I swear I heard someone. Hello? No one. That's odd. This has just been the wind. Aiden? Aiden, are you there? It's it's Irene. Do you copy? I'm shit shit. Is this still- Now I'm sitting in my car at Sonic, drinking a cranberry slushie. I- I know that's weird, but I wasn't sure if that thing was gonna follow me. I wanted to go somewhere public, just in case. Plus, I think I deserve a slushie after what I've been through. Would you even believe me if I told you? Probably not. Good thing you don't have to believe me then, huh? <laughs> well, I... I heard a scream. I swear if I go back and there's no scream at all in the recording, I'm gonna... I heard a scream. I turned around and, uh, called out a bit to see if there was anyone in danger. But there was nothing. No, and there wasn't another scream or anything like that thought I'd just heard it wrong, and that it was just the wind or a wild animal. But then when I turned around, how do I even begin to describe it? The, the branches rose up? The forest floor underneath them did too. It wasn't like there was something coming out of the ground, though. No, it was like there was something in the ground that was trying to get out. It looked kind of like red dough rising. No, that's not right. Whatever it was, it swelled like it was alive. Now that I think about it, actually, there were multiple things in there throbbing inside of it, squirming around. It was like a cat under a blanket, or cats plural, I guess. This big whatever it was, clearly not just a pile of dirt and branches, rose up and I swear this thing didn't have any eyes but it was looking straight at me. I just ran. What else could I have done? I looked over my shoulder once to see if it was chasing me but that was it. When I did, it seemed to be moving, though I'm not sure where it was trying to go. It was big, it would have been hard for it to navigate through the trees. Unless it could, I don't know, morph around them? It didn't seem to have a concrete body or anything, just one big writhing mass. Don't know how I'm gonna approach Aiden tomorrow. Hey, so there was no bear emergency, but I did almost get killed by a really big pile of dirt that seemed to gain sentience. Why the radio silence, bud? Should I tell him? I mean, would he even believe me? Can I tell anyone about this? I mean, of course I could tell someone. I sure was more than willing to tell someone who... Maybe I was wrong before. You would believe me, Rose, right? I miss you so much. I know I've said that a lot, but... I was so scared. I still am. I don't know what that was or if it's gonna come back. I'm at a loss and I have no one else to go to about this. I wish you were here, not just some recording on my phone, but in the car with me. I wish I could hold you. <laughs> Actually, I think more than anything, I just need a really long hug. It wouldn't be the same if it weren't from you, though. You know why I think I kept doing these recordings? I can never get over you even after all these years. 
Because maybe if I'd gotten an answer, I would have been able to move on. Maybe you'd drowned in the lake, maybe you'd gotten a job at a diner in California with a new name for your new life. I mean, maybe you just found someone else and were too afraid to tell me. I never got that, though. I never got that closure one night you were there and then the next morning you weren't. And I'll never know, will I? Because I'm just going to keep denying the truth and telling myself that you still care. That someday you'll show up at my doorstep and, like the fool I am, I'll just let you come in. You won't even have to tell me where you were for the past four years, I promise. I promise. But you won't. You're never coming home. Because I never really was your home, after all. That's why I say Today's quote is, I am not to speak to you, I am to think of you when I sit alone or wake at night alone, I am to wait, I do not doubt I am to meet you again, I am to see to it that I do not lose you. Walt Whitman into a Stranger, from Leaves of Grass, 1867 Are you listening to us? Because we are listening to you. The Heart of Ether is a podcast made by Three-Eyed Frog Presents. It is written and produced by Val West. The voice of Irene Gray is Luca Miller. The voice of Aiden Stevenson is Ayla Parencino. Music is produced by Luca Miller. The song featured in this episode is Even Though You Ask Me To by Rosemary Romano. You can find more of their music on Spotify or wherever you get your music. Special thanks to Bryn Nolan and Rhea Nolan for help with sound effects in this episode. Follow the show and find transcripts. You can follow us on Twitter and Tumblr at Heart of Ether. Questions and comments can be emailed to us at heartofether at gmail.com. Want to help support the show? Rate and review us on iTunes and talk about the show using hashtag heartofetherpod. Thank you for listening.